Good afternoon. I am Jacob from the Hong Kong International Alliance in Brisbane. Today we have George Christensen, who is an Australian member of the parliament representing those in, in Queensland. He is also a member of the Liberal National Party. Welcome, George. Thanks very much, Jacob. Yep. I've noticed you've done quite a bit of work um, to raise awareness in Australia about how the Chinese Communist Party has been interfering with our politics, economies and education. Um, why is that? What is your uh, reason behind to raise this awareness in Australia? Well, I think that the Chinese Communist Party right now is an existential threat to democracy throughout the world, uh, mm -hmm. whether that be in Hong Kong, uh, they've certainly seen that, they've just completely obliterated democracy but also in places like Australia, where unfortunately we know we've got CCP operatives actually active uh, you know, in the country. And we've seen instances like uh, uh, a recent cyber attack on the Australian Parliament, on the West Australian Parliament, that pretty much people realise come from China. So uh, all of these incursions are a very, very big problem and it's all about undermining democracy and undermining our free way of life. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, and we know that recently, yesterday to be exact, um, the federal government has cancelled Victoria's deal with China uh, about the One Belt, One Road initiative. Do you think both parties, Labour and Liberal, are raising, like, um, having more awareness to what's been happening with dealing with China, uh, how to bully Australia, and do you think the government would be doing more to suppress this infiltration from the Chinese Communist Party? I think that over the course of the pandemic in particular, that uh, you know, the, the, the threat that China poses to Australia has just become more acute for everyone. Yeah. So, um, you know, no one's got lily white hands in the political sphere in Australia. Um, the, the Labor Party and the Liberal and National Coalition, which I'm a member of, have both, in a way, sucked up to China because of the economic influence that China has over our country. Uh, and yet it is that economic influence that's proven to be such a problem when they start demanding things, uh, you know, making threats on the country and saying, unless you change your laws, we're going to do this to you economically. We're going to suspend um, Australian exports uh, of whatever, you know, lobsters or uh, or wine, yeah. um, you know, that, that's, that's all a big concern. Again, it's all about undermining uh, democracy and undermining freedom. To have another yeah. country telling our country that, hey, you've got to change your laws <laughs> or we're going to do this, well, that's blackmail. Yeah. And, you know, if we're going to give in to that, uh, we might as well hand the keys to Beijing and just say, you run it. Um, but we haven't. Um, and I think that eyes are now wide open, which is why uh, the Belt and Road Initiative or the Belt and Road Deal that uh, the Dan Andrews uh, Victorian Labor government had done with China has now been suspended. Mm -hmm. um, it's over. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that we see more of that from our government and that we see support from the Labor Party for that as well because this shouldn't be a political thing, it shouldn't be a partisan thing. This is something that's in our national interest because it's all about national sovereignty. Yeah. It's totally absurd how they can put out their cohesive diplomacy to force other countries to like kowtow to them. It's like how New Zealand have been like um, paying more and more respect to China. And do you think Australia can stand its ground? Well, recently, I'm the chairman of, of the uh, Joint Standing Committee on Trade and Investment Growth for the Parliament. And recently, uh, we undertook a report that's all about diversification. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, while it wasn't absolutely there in black and white. The whole thing was really about what do we do about this problem that we've got ourselves in with China. We almost painted ourselves into a corner where one in three of our trade dollars uh, is linked to China. Yeah. And so there's a lot of jobs that fall off the, the back of that. So when they start threatening industries, that has real impact. And the whole uh, report and the recommendations we come out with is what do we do about this? Uh, and the key thing now is that we need to pivot away from China. We need to focus on new markets, uh, Indonesia, India, 
uh, Vietnam, new emerging markets that actually can replace what China has currently with Australia. It's only in doing that can we protect our businesses, our yep. industries, our workers, and at the same time protect our sovereignty and our democracy from foreign interference. That is really right. Um, we should like focus on other markets and source from other countries as well instead of being bullied by this uh, authoritarian um, regime. Um, there are obviously a lot of markets like uh, Japan or Korea or Indonesia or other countries. And I can see Hong Kong people can play a really big part of it to contribute to the Australian society. I'm from Hong Kong myself and from your perspective, um, how much likely do you think the Australian people or the government or the parliament is in support of Hong Kong people uh, in fight of democracy and freedom? Well, I think there's a tremendous uh, amount of support from the Australian public for the people of Hong Kong who've had their freedoms, rights and democracy ripped away from them. And there is that sense of, of, of connection, I guess, with the Hong Kong people because Australia was once a British colony, yep. um, Hong Kong was once a British colony. And we saw the handover from the British to the Chinese uh, and the handover was done on the legal basis, the legal basis that uh, you know the freedom and democracy be retained yeah. in that country and they breached those rules. They breached the legal agreement that they set out with the United Kingdom and taken all that away. So I think that because of that shared sort of heritage mm -hmm. uh, that the Australian people have uh, a great sympathy for the people of Hong Kong and I know that we've extended the safe haven visas to certain uh, Hong Kong residents that are here in Australia. Uh, hopefully we can do much, much more than that. Uh, I want to see much, much more than that uh, because people who flee oppressive totalitarianism, oppressive communism, often become the most ardent uh, supporters of the nation that they flee to. Mm -hmm. and, and more than that, uh, we know that there's a great entrepreneurial spirit uh, from the people of Hong Kong that uh, we'd love to tap into in this country, yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, um, in terms of like how should we gain more support from the Australian population or within the government to gain more compassionate visa, like the Safe Haven visa, or even passing through the Magnitsky Act. What do you think we should do to gain more support? Well, look, I think that we just need to uh, talk about this more because, uh, look, if I walked down the road and I spoke to 10 people and I said, what do you know about Magnitsky? They'd probably yeah. wonder who the hell I was talking about, <laughs> you know. So we need to be uh, more uh, vocal about what this Magnitsky Act is and uh, what it will do. And I'm actually going to engage in that over the coming yep. months. Uh, I'm going to be launching a campaign uh, around getting the Magnitsky Act in place and more than that, uh, the Magnitsky Act being used to name people who have breached human rights in the Chinese Communist Party regime, whether that's been uh, the rights of Hong Kong residents, the rights of Uyghurs, the rights of Tibetans, the rights of Chinese Christians or yep. Chinese democracy activists or Falun Dafa, it doesn't matter if people have breached human rights in that regime. They should be named, they should be called out and they should not be allowed to come to this country. They should be not, not be allowed to store ill-gotten gains uh, in this country or buy property or anything like that and that's what the Magnitsky Act would do. Now you mentioned also about visas and a safe haven. I think that there is enough support in the Australian populace that we could look at a proportion of our refugee uh, humani humanitarian intake uh, that we have into this country being dedicated to people who are persecuted or yeah. potentially could be persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party regime. Those are people who are in grave trouble and uh, whether they're Tibetans, whether they're Hong Kong residents, whether they're Uyghurs, whether they're Christians or whether they're democracy activists. They're the people I think that we would welcome with open arms into this country. And we can do that without increasing our humanitarian intake. All we've got to do is dedicate a proportion of that humanitarian intake over the next few years yep. to those persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party regime. So that's something else that I'm going to be pushing and hopefully it'll have the support of HKIA and other organisations around the country. Thank you so much for your support. I hope with uh, the support from the Australian uh, and together with Uyghurs, Tibetans and other like countries like Vietnamese, Myanmar people or Thailand people, 
will win this fight against the Chinese Communist Party because uh, we've been seeing a lot of Hong Kong people, people with my age, have been persecuted under the regime of the Chinese Communist Party. They have been seriously injured by, by the police in Hong Kong. And they, we've seen how our uh, legislative system have changed. There is no more rule of law. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party have broken its promise in the Sino-British Joint Declaration. And it would be good to have more uh, people from Hong Kong who have the uh, mind for freedom and democracies, likewise in Australia, to come yes. to Australia and settle down in Australia and to contribute to this society. And thank you so much for uh, the time uh, in this interview. Thank and you. I hope to see you more in the future. Thanks thank so you. much, Jacob.